Are you surprised by what you're seeing in Sri Lanka playing out over the last few weeks? Or do you believe this was something that was coming given the looming economic crisis that has now exploded? No, I think it has exceeded all expectations, if you can call them expectations, because uh, it's good to see a democratic popular protest. Uh, we are not the, the violence, I think, comes uh, is a small part of it, but I think the the fact that uh, all sections of the people, all classes, all ethnic groups, people belonging to various religions, have come together mm -hmm. with one demand. You made a mess, go home. There are, they have to the entire Rajapaksha uh, family and group. But, uh, in, but the president is hanging on. And I think uh, unless he goes, mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't think it's going to be resolved. However, he in his, his address the nation. Mm -hmm. And I just learned that he says he said that Within a week, he'll appoint a new prime minister and cabinet, mm -hmm. restore a version of the 19th Amendment, which uh, clips executive powers and empowers parliament, at least to an extent. And then he will begin discussion on abolition of the executive presidency when things settle a bit. Uh, and uh, you think so he's been having consultations. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's too late okay. uh, to attempt to do this. Uh, he's made, this is a concession, at least in words. But I think it's far too late to do it. Am I surprised? Yes. I think uh, the, the scale and the intensity of the protests, although in the north and east it's less, uh, less intense, uh, I think it is, is, is surprising. And, let me, uh, let me take I would that say Professor. inspiring. I would also say inspiring. Yeah. Interesting. I'll come to that word inspiring later to ask you what you mean by that. But Dr. Sarvanamathu, are you surprised also? Because, you know, till a few months ago it appeared that the Rajapakshas were as powerful as any leadership that Sri Lanka had ever had. Suddenly the economic crisis blows up in their face. What next? Street protests to the point where the Prime Minister has to resign and virtually flee from his residence. Has the scale and intensity of the protests surprised you? Yes, it has. I think it has surprised everyone that you have such a, that you have such a huge outpouring of popular protest against the Rajpaksas and that it has been peaceful and it has involved all ethnicities, all religions, all uh, class and caste groups and all of that kind of thing. It's unified the country uh, in to together because the country, everyone has been hit in their bellies. You know, the economic shortages and the the sheer corruption, the scale of the corruption of the Rajapaksas has got everyone joined together in coming out in protest. So yes, I mean, it has, has certainly surprised me and I think surprised most people. And also we must not forget one other thing that is the importance of social media being used to galvanize people to such a great extent. So I, I, but are you saying that these are leaderless protests? Because there's one view that this is now very politically organized to get the Rajapakshas out at all costs. The other view is this was just anger of the public that just boiled over because they said enough is enough. We don't have food uh, at our homes and uh, the government must go. Is this leaderless yes, I mean, or driven by politics? Well, it was leaderless, but we have seen that in the last couple of days that certain groups have come to the forefront like mm -hmm. the Inter-University Student Federation. And they are supposed to have uh, political affiliations with the Frontline Socialist Party and mm -hmm. even the JVP. So the Janata Vimukti Peramuna. So yes, there are, there are people who have political agendas who are part of Golface, but the beauty of the Golface protests and the protests around the country was that it incorporated a mm -hmm. whole variety of political opinions, religions, ethnicities. It was a broad, broad church. So is it, would I be, uh, would I, could I liken it to a Tahrir Square moment for Sri Lanka? Where suddenly yes, the elites, the elites are being told enough is enough. The Rajapakshas are being told you've looted the country. The people are saying we want to recapture, reclaim our space. Absolutely. Absolutely. The demand of the protesters has been that Gotabha Rajapaksa go that the rest of his family go and that the money that they allege they have stolen and looted be brought mm -hmm. back. Can I just take that for a moment to Rajendra Abhyankar because Mr. Abhyankar, India's stand is that we stand with the people of Sri Lanka but this is a government and not just Mr. Modi's government but previous governments also have been seen to be generally reaching out to the Rajapakshas. Do you believe that this stand can work that we are with the people not with the politicians? How worrying is the situation in Sri Lanka 
for those in New Delhi who are looking closely at a neighbor in turmoil? Well, uh, I'll make a few points. First is that um, the situation, of course, is worrying in Delhi because we have um, we have we had not thought that it would go so much out of hand, mm -hmm. and we have done what we could in terms of uh, providing one billion dollars of. But that's not going to be enough. In fact, to set the country right, you're going to need more than six, seven billion dollars to be given there. But that's besides the point. The thing is, first is that when I was Deputy High Commissioner, the, I found I was there when the crisis took place, the ethnic crisis, mm -hmm. where for the first time, what was a Tamil issue, I mean, what was a Sri Lankan issue, became an Indian issue. Mm -hmm. And I found that the Sri Lankans are very quick to actually take to violence of the kind you saw, we are seeing now, we, we have seen it earlier. That's not new. For a Buddhist country, I'm really surprised that so much violence exists in that country. But let me, that's just a general comment. The mm -hmm. basic thing is that the country has been run into the ground by the Rajapaksha family. They have mulcted the, com the country, its treasury, and everything that they could. And they have done it for years. And believe it or not, I mean, believe it, that this, they were democratically elected. And these problems have been taking place uh, in other countries also. Because what is happening, it's mm -hmm. a general trend that the democratic governments in most countries are becoming dictatorial, one way or the other. 